Hello and welcome to this very special show called the Tax Roundtable. Hello and welcome. The entire budget is actually only about taxes, come to think of it. The finance bill, which details almost every aspect of what the government wants to do, we have to look at that in detail. That's where the interesting bits come out. That's where most of the stock impinging factors are also hidden today. For example, there are a lot of changes, which only if you go through that uh, tax bit, you will find out. And joining me now to take us through all those details is our special guest, Mukesh Bhutani. Mukesh, it's been an interesting budget, but a lot of people say the devil is in the detail, and slowly the devils are tumbling out. Yes, I think there are a lot of changes uh, that are there. Uh, uh, you know, if I may just, uh, there are a lot of details in the investment allowance being applicable to specified industries. There is this new uh, dispute resolution mechanism by which a collegium of three commissioners will make a determination uh, whether to accept uh, the tax officer's view or not. It's at this point in time applicable only to transfer pricing cases, but also it applies to all right. foreign companies as well. So I think you're right, there are a lot of details. A lot of details, and that's where we uh, need the clarifications. Uh, we have in our uh, Mumbai studio here, Mr. N.C. Hegre, partner, direct taxes with Deloitte. You will uh, take us through some of those issues. But more important, we will be talking to two special guests, Chairman CBDT, Central Board of Direct Taxes, and Chairman of Central Board of Excise and Custom. Uh, Mr. P.C. Jha, who will be telling us what the government's thinking was behind all these developments, all these issues that they have brought up. But lots to talk about, especially on the fringe benefit tax, given the fact that it's gone off. Let's just uh, quickly look at some of the headlines at this hour on the tax part of it, if we can go through them. Uh, of course, the first one being the fringe benefit tax being completely abolished. That's good news for employers, but employees, uh, there is a bit of a problem with ESOP. We'll come to that in just a bit as we look at those details. Also looking at commodities transaction tax, that's been abolished. Also looking at minimum alternate tax hike to 15% uh, and that is something which we will be talking about as well. Uh, but first off, the big question we are asking is why have ESOFs been deleted from the FBT and included in the perquisite list? That's something which is uh, flummox a lot of people. Mukesh, what do you think has been the rationale and we'll of course get the government guys to talk about it. Well, I don't know what the rationale is. Uh, to me, it seemed that uh, slowly and steadily the minimum alternate tax uh, uh, you know, rate is being uh, enhanced. Uh, you know, this is in a way can be viewed as a backdoor entry uh, to tax people, particularly exempt entities. So on one hand, you're giving away uh, tax holidays or extending the tax holidays. On the other hand, you're taking away as, uh, as minimum alternate tax. So it is certainly going to impact the IT companies in the short to medium term. The only thing is that they've extended the, ex uh, the, the credit from seven years to 10 year period. I'll uh, come on that. Uh Hegre, how do you see this whole thing? Because a lot of people rejoiced when they saw the FBT fringe benefit tax being abolished, but then they realized for ESOPs and sweat equity, that's something which has not really come through. Yeah, uh, I think that the entire removal uh, of the ESOP from the FBT is a part and parcel of the FBT itself getting removed. So, you know, there was representation from industry, there were representation even from political parties that FBT had caused a lot of, uh, you know, there was a lot of compliance involved in relation to the administrative procedures. And given that ESOP was uh, actually kind of made a part of the entire FBT regime, uh, once the entire FBT regime has been kind of dismantled or done away with, uh, the natural corollary or the consequence was that now uh, ESOPs will be now taxed as a perquisite. But uh, that in a way is not a detour. You're saying that that is pretty much an expected lines because a lot of employees thought they were being unfairly targeted and they still continue to be uh, targeted in the sense that they will have to pay that tax. No, I don't think, I think it was pretty much expected because you couldn't have a situation where ESOPs would go totally uh, tax free. Probably what could have been done is that if you look at the fine print again, once when, when they have been now uh, going, when they are going to be taxed as perquisites, there was a time in between where uh, uh, ESOPs which had been uh, granted and which were in accordance with certain guidelines which are framed by the board were exempted from tax. And so uh, a person who was granted an ESOP paid actually tax only when he finally sold the shares. Uh, unfortunately, this time they only uh, restricted the ESOP as, a, I mean, oh, sorry, provided for ESOP to be taxed as a perquisite and have not added uh, the lines providing for the exemption. Right. Uh, so, so I would believe this was on expected lines.